Hello Year One, this is your first maths meeting of the week. So each day there is going to be a short video for you to watch and this week is going to be me every day. This is going to be just like a maths meeting at school. So all you're going to need from your pack is your whiteboard and your pen. If you haven't got that, go and get it now. Unlike your other lessons, there's not going to be a um, form in your pack or on the seesaw for you to complete. All your work's just going to be on your whiteboard with your pen. If you'd like to take a photo of your whiteboard at the end and put it on seesaw, I'm sure your teachers would be really, really pleased to see it. So let's get started. So our first slide is all about 2D shapes. I wonder if on your whiteboard you could draw, hmm, let me think of a 2D shape. Can you draw a circle? Have a go. I'm going to give you five seconds to draw your circle. Five, four, three, two, one. Have you drawn a circle? How many sides does it have? Here's my circle. Yours should look quite a bit like mine. Might be a bit smaller, might be a bit bigger. And a circle has got how many sides? One side. That's right. It's curved, but it's just got one side. Well done. And a circle is a 2D shape. Shall we have a go at drawing another 2D shape? Wipe your whiteboard then. Can you have a go at drawing a square? Off you go. You've got five more seconds. Five. I draw my square. Four. Three. Two. One. Have you got a square? Brilliant. How many sides has your square got? Four sides. That's right. Well done. Mine's got four sides as well. Four straight sides. And all the sides should be around the same length for it to be a square. Well done. Should we just do one more? So we've had a shape with one side and we've had a shape with four sides. I'm now thinking of a shape with three sides. What's a shape with three sides called? It's a triangle. Well done. Can you draw a triangle on your board? I'm going to draw a triangle too. Are you ready to show me? Show me your triangle. Here's mine. Mine might look different to yours because triangles can look very different. But as long as it's got three straight sides, it's a triangle. Can you try drawing a triangle that looks completely different to the one you've already got? I'm going to draw a completely different one. Let me have a think. Are you ready to show me your second triangle? Here's mine. Both triangles, but they look very different, don't they? Well done, everybody. Okay, we're going to move on and we quickly talk about 3D shapes. What is the difference between 3D shapes and 2D shapes? Well, 3D shapes you can hold, they've got three dimensions, you can hold them. This is a 3D shape. I'm thinking of a 3D shape. Here it is. Can you see it's made up of some squares? What is this 3D shape called? Can you try writing it down on your whiteboard? Don't worry about the spellings. What is this 3D shape called? It is called a cube. Well done if you knew that. Fantastic. Shall we try another one? Here's a 3D shape that looks just like a ball. I tell you what, don't worry about writing it down on your whiteboard. Can you just shout it out for me? It's a sphere. Well done. Brilliant. We'll do some more 3D shapes tomorrow. OK, let's move on then. Here are some number bonds. What do we mean when we talk about number bonds? We're talking about two numbers that add up to make 10. Well done. Any two numbers, when we add them together, we get 10. We call it a number bond. There's some here. One add nine is 10. Two add eight is 10. Three add seven is 10. And four add six is 10. That's great, but there's at least one number bond missing. Can you spot it? Can you write it down on your whiteboard and show me which number bond is missing? Can you spot it? Can you shout it out for me? Well, we are certainly missing five and five is 10. Well done if you could see that that was missing. Sometimes as well, we include 10 add zero is 10. So you could have had that one as well. And we also know that these number bonds, any number bond, can be done in any order. So if 4 add 6 is 10, then we also know that 6 add 4 
four is 10, we can swap them around, it doesn't matter. Well done. Right, we're gonna have a look now at the days of the week. How many days of the week are there in total? We've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then we've got the weekend, haven't we? Saturday and Sunday. How many is that all together? Seven. Well done, there are seven days of the week. Now there's a few missing here. Can you have a think and tell me which days of the week are missing? What comes after Monday and before Wednesday? It's Tuesday. Well done. And what comes after Thursday and before Saturday is one of my favourite days of the week. Well done if you knew that that was Friday. So here are our days of the week. They might be in a slightly different order to how we normally see them. We normally start with Monday, don't we? But we know that we go from Sunday to Monday and we go from Saturday back up to Sunday. So it doesn't really matter if we see them in a slight, slightly differently, as long as they always go in that same order. A bit like our months of the year. Now your maths lesson this uh, today was all about the months of the year and the order they come in. Hopefully you made yourself a fantastic paper chain with the months of the year in the right order. There are two missing here. So there are 12 in total, but there are two missing. It's the month that comes right at the beginning of the year, the month that we're in right now. And then the month that's right at the end of the year, the month that we just had, which had Christmas in it. Which two months are those? Do you know them? Should we have a look? January, right at the beginning of the year, that's where we are at the moment. And December, which we just had, which was Christmas. Right, our final slide for today. Thinking about your number bonds, there are some slight mistakes in these questions. Can you see them? What mistake do you think somebody's made? Well, if we have a look at the first question, it says nine add two is 10. How do we know that that must be wrong? What fact do you know that can help you? I know that nine add one is 10. That's one of my number bonds. So if nine add one is 10, nine add two must be one more, one more than 10, 11. Well done. What about this second question then? Eight take away four is five. Eight take away four is five. Hang on a minute. I know my doubles. And I know that four and four is eight. So if I've got eight and I take away one of those fours, what have I got left? Well done, I know that I've got four left. So using my knowledge of doubles and halves to help me, I know that that question's wrong because I know if I've got eight and I take away four, I've got another four left because four add four is eight. Well done if you spotted that. Fantastic work in your um, math meeting today. And if you've got some work on your whiteboard that you'd like to share on Seesaw, take a quick picture, put it on, and I'm sure your teachers would be really, really pleased to see it. Well done, everybody, and I'll see you tomorrow for another math meeting. Bye bye.